up everybody welcome back now in this video we're going to be talking about you guessed it metroid prime trilogy on the nintendo switch now why are we talking about this now well we did mention it a little bit ago that we do expect that nintendo will be porting the metroid prime trilogy to the switch obviously because metroid prime 4 is coming out very soon and due to this fact it makes all the sense in the world to release the metroid prime trilogy on the console because there is no Metroid Prime games on the Nintendo Switch. You don't want to just release a Metroid Prime 4, the fourth in a series of games, without releasing the first three on the console. So obviously while it's not confirmed by Nintendo, it is extremely likely that we will be getting a Metroid Prime trilogy on the Nintendo Switch as soon as 2019 in my opinion maybe even in the first half of the year in Metroid Prime Trilogy on the Switch. And when will these games be announced, you ask? Well, quite possibly also very soon at the Game Awards is the very distinct possibility. We had Reggie wear that Metroid shirt when he took that picture with GF Keeley getting ready for the Game Awards just, what, about a month ago or so ago, possibly longer than that. But anyway, it was hinted that quite possibly we could have a Metroid presence at the Game Awards because of that. Now many people got excited that we could be seeing Metroid Prime 4 at the Game Awards. Now personally I think though that Nintendo would reveal Metroid Prime Trilogy before they go ahead and show the fourth game. And I said this in the last Metroid Prime 4 video is that I think Nintendo in my opinion would be better suited to dedicate an entire show or a Nintendo Direct segment to Metroid Prime 4 and maybe in the Game Awards it could get you know lost in the shuffle with all the other announcements they want to have the entire presence all to themselves and have that announcement be very special for Metroid Prime 4 when they show the first gameplay footage of it but of course I would love to be wrong on that and then show the game at the Game Awards that would be great along with the Metroid Prime trilogy I think that'd be fantastic if they actually did that do I think they'll do that though for all four of the games at the Game Awards I don't think so I think we're very likely though if they were to do something like that to at least talk about Metroid Prime 4 and say hey you're gonna see it soon but to get you ready for that we're gonna show you the Metroid Prime Trilogy HD on the Nintendo Switch and then they could show a trailer for those three games and then they can go into possibly some of the enhancements they'll have for the Metroid Prime Trilogy on the Nintendo Switch. And this is the main thing we're going to be discussing here is the actual changes in the gameplay that are going to happen most likely for this port on the Nintendo Switch. Because obviously we're all in agreement that this is going to happen, it's got to happen. So what changes can we expect in the Metroid Prime Trilogy port on the Nintendo Switch in HD? Obviously that would be graphics of course now the easiest thing they could do is just put the game in hd and have it be a straight hd port without updating any of the textures which would be just fine in my opinion i've played metroid prime 1 2 and 3 on dolphin and it does look very good with the standard original textures in hd on that dolphin emulator on pc however of course when you get up close to certain objects the textures are lacking quite a bit of detail and some of the environments are flat and a little bit blocky looking in some of the structures and things like that maybe possibly too blocky for today's standards they could be updated a little bit at least so even though a straight port to hd would look nice on your screen i do think it would be nice if they updated the textures to be at least updated to today's standards to make those details stand out better in hd and of course 1080p 60 frames per second would be preferable in docked mode and 720p 60 frames per second in portable mode which the switch should be able to do quite easily on those old GameCube games and Wii games. Because remember, we're talking about a GameCube game that came out in 2002, 2004 for Metroid Prime 1 and 2, and of course the Wii game, Metroid Prime 3 Corruption, in 2007. So the newest game in the series is already 11 years old. So I do think the Switch could run those games quite easily. And on top of the HD resolution, it of course could add better textures and even possibly change lighting effects on the original Metroid Prime 1 and 2 to be more in line with what they did in Metroid Prime 3. In Metroid Prime 3, they had this glow and bloom effects that they added in the game, which looked quite nice actually on the Wii hardware. They could actually do some of that as an option if you want to turn it on or off for the original GameCube games as well. I think that'll make those games look really nice and pop out even more so. Some people obviously didn't like that effect. Maybe they preferred the more static look of the original games with a more natural lighting. I think the graphical effects could be optional. Maybe you could opt to have the original look of the games on their textures and lighting and everything and have the option to turn it on or off, which I think would be cool. A lot of games actually do that. I believe Halo does that on the Xbox One X. You can turn the additional graphics on 
or off to make it look more like the original. So besides just graphics, what about the control of the game? Now, this is actually the really cool thing that I'm looking forward to is that Nintendo and whoever's porting this, I'm not sure if it would be Retro Studios who ports it or another company who just, you know, because they're porting the technical aspects of the game to the Switch, not really developing a you know, new game for it. So I don't think it would be Retro Studios porting the games over. But of course, we're not going to rule Retro Studios out. They could quite possibly have a hand in some of the adjustments they're making to these games on the Switch including Metroid Prime 3, which took heavy use of the Wii remote and sensor bar for the pointing of your aiming on that game in 2007. It made a lot of use of that, and then when they ported the other two games with that Metroid Prime trilogy, they added in the Wii remote aiming and nunchuck motion control, you know, like shake the nunchuck. Basically, you could use the nunchuck's motion control and the Wii remote's motion control to do certain actions in the game. And they added that in, actually, to the original GameCube games, Metroid Prime 1 and 2, to make it seem more like Metroid Prime 3 on the Wii. So on the Nintendo Switch, you have an interesting situation here because I think the control aspect is going to make a world of difference for these games on the Nintendo Switch. You have the ability to do multiple different things on the system. You could have the option of having the same type of motion controls with Metroid Prime 3 and having the same type of thing on Metroid Prime 1 and 2 with the Joy-Cons, at least when you're in dock mode. But what about when you're in handheld mode? You wouldn't really be able to take the game on the go with you very easily if you have to detach the Joy-Cons and play the games in tabletop mode just so they could have motion controls in those three games. Now remember, the original Metroid Prime 1 and 2 never had motion controls in the first place, so they could add traditional controls back into those two games quite easily on Metroid Prime Trilogy on the Nintendo Switch without having to use the Joy-Cons. Of course, it could be an option to use those but I do think they would easily be able to add in the original controls on those two games at the very least. Now, what about Metroid Prime 3? So Metroid Prime 3 never was designed to have traditional controls in it. However, I do think they could very easily adopt a traditional control style for Metroid Prime 3 as well by making the same changes that they made, basically reverse engineering it, just like they did on Metroid Prime 1 and 2 originally on the Metroid Prime Trilogy on the Wii. They could basically do the same thing and add back in traditional controls when you're playing at least in handheld mode, and of course have the option to do so with the Pro Controller when you're playing in docked mode as well. And of course these are games meant to be played for a long time, so when you're playing these games portably, you're going to get that 3-4 to four hours of battery life on there. So being forced to play in tabletop mode just to emulate motion controls that are in the original games doesn't make sense when you think about it. So I do think they're going to add in traditional controls in all three of these games. Of course, it would take a little bit more effort to do so, but I don't think it would be game breaking in a game like Metroid Prime 3. I think they can emulate a lot of those actions quite easily with a button press and you know maybe a turn of the analog stick when you're doing those pushing in and pulling out things with the Wii remote. They could do that easily with one of the analog sticks or a simple button press really. Those things in Metroid Prime 3 were not necessarily something that made the game way better. It was just like little added extra flair you had on the controls to immerse you more into the experience which is cool and they can still have that in docked mode with the joy cons if they want to of course emulate the original metro prime 3 but i don't think they're just going to limit it to only motion controls like they did on the wii version of this game the system needs to be portable and compact and you want to be playing these games on the go for at least three to four hours at a time because these are core games landscapes in those three games are very big you could easily get lost or you can forget where you are if you're just stuck to playing it for short periods of time because you know in tabletop mode it kind of limits you into how long you can play really because it kind of takes away the portability aspect of it you can't just pick it up and go anywhere you want with it you gotta set it on tables somewhere get yourself situated just right get the joy cons out and have more space you know in order to wave your hands around it's basically just like playing a game at home but just you know at a table somewhere you know or somewhere else and you need more space it kind of limits the more direct portability aspect of the nintendo switch if they were to force the motion controls on there now granted super mario party is an example of this that nintendo just did this with that they do force you to use the joy cons even in portable mode but since that is a party game and not really necessarily meant to be played as a single player core experience that does kind of make sense in that instance but for the metroid prime trilogy i do expect there to be some type of standard control options for those games and they do have an opportunity to go back to the original GameCube type of controls and modify those even, maybe have a third control style that you could use that emulates more modern dual analog stick setups. 
Maybe you'll move with the left analog stick and look around with the right analog stick instead of having to hold a button and stop Samus and look around like that, like they did in Metroid Prime 1 and 2. A lot of people didn't like that control aspect. They felt it was too limiting, even though personally I had no problem with it. I liked it. The game worked. It was designed well with that control style. But they could add that ability in for you to look around while you're moving with the second analog stick and make it more traditional style in that sense. And the reason why this is very likely the case is because of that that fact the switch is portable and it needs to be compact and have the experience all in your hand and in order to do that effectively to play it on the go you have to have standard control options for Metroid Prime 3, 2, and 1. So I'm really excited to see what they do with these three games ported to the Nintendo Switch. We know what these games have to be coming. Obviously, we don't have a confirmation yet, but come on, we know these games have to be coming in some form in the not too distant future, quite possibly as soon as the Game Awards, they may actually announce these games. So I'm really excited for Metroid Prime on the Switch. And I hope you guys are as well. Let me know what you think about this in the comment section. Do you think they're just going to have the same exact controls as the original games? Or do you think they're going to adjust them in order for the games to work better in portable mode for the Nintendo Switch? Because this is a core game. Don't forget about that. And doing this would make a lot of sense. Alright guys, if you did enjoy this video, please hit the like button, subscribe for more. And I'll talk to you very soon in the next video. Have a great day.